is Astari Hitimana. I'm Rwandese. My name is Lula Dei Takalete Shome, and I was born and raised in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my mama used to be a tailor, uh, not the professional one, but uh, uh, it's where I get the inspiration and the love of uh, fashion. I, I've loved art since the beginning, uh, and my father used to encourage it a lot more, so he used to take us to like museums and art exhibitions, and I would look at like big canvases and um, like mural work, and I used to be very fascinated with that. And after that, I also had um, a cousin that used to live with us, and he was an amazing artist as well. So whatever he did, I used to do. I used to copy and mimic all of his art. And after that, it grew on me and it went into fashion. Um, I then started a business and a brand that is based in Ethiopia. Um, and it's still with me and I'm still trying to incorporate it with clothes, with um, uh, from murals to ink sketches to paintings. I've never think that one day I will have um, a, a, a fashion house. So uh, my family pushed me to to do it as a, as a job. I did not study fashion. I, I studied art, I would say, when it was during summer when I was in fourth grade but the people that I've met and the teachers that I've had then has really influenced and encouraged it so much that I did it with myself and by myself. So I did not particularly study it in college or anything else, but I studied while doing it. I think it was in 2018 that I opened my own uh, fashion house. I would say I started taking it a lot more seriously in 2017 and 2018. In the US, after I finished my four-year college, I had a lot more flexible time, I would say, with work and after work. So I started doing it a lot more and I saw the feedback from friends and friends of friends who really want to have a piece. And that's when I was like, oh, this is more than myself and this can be more than just what I do with my hobby. Um, so that's when I really started taking it seriously and even when gifting it to people there were others who say no you could sell it actually and hearing those words of encouragement kind of pushed me to pursue it a lot more yeah. Uh, Twinkle um, uh, started in two, 2018 so uh, the reason why I, I named uh, my brand Twinkle is I wanted people to, to, to shine, to, to feel beautiful, to feel confident in uh, uh, um, my creation. My art is truly inspired by who I am, which is an African. And I think it has a lot of African prints and the culture and the heritage and the people. So every, whenever I meet people and there's that inspiration that ignites, I go and make it. And it is truly African and I can say that um, wholeheartedly. And um, what I'm trying to get, it, to get at, or the message that I'm trying to get across is that Whenever we think about art, especially within the continent, there is this, um, uh, it's very far from us. It is not something that we have on the daily or we think we can purchase on the daily or have it as part of our lives, which is completely not true because we are the creators of things and we have been the founding members of things. And just because it, um, it's not part of the culture or we think it's not part of the culture, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So by making it and making it even more like something to have on the daily, it is for us to change that narrative and to be more open to arts and our embracing our culture. I think the main, the main reason why um, I'm in fashion is to make people um, feel beautiful, feel unique, feel um, loved because uh, I think every, uh, every, everyone can, can shine, everyone can feel beautiful but we need just to, 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 to get to figure out how to put it people feel that, that much beautiful through our fashion. I think with anything there are multiple challenges that you face and I think with art it's that 
um, one when you're if you're a creative yes you have the the creative thinking and you may know what you want to do but when it comes to resources you may not have the tools and the necessary things that you need to actually execute to the full extent of your vision right and I think um, it goes to any other creative and this applies to any other creative as well because for me just with painting to get paint is, is very difficult as most paint is also imported from somewhere else and when it's imported it becomes twice three times expensive to get and with you for somebody who has this love for something you may not be financially equipped to actually purchase those things and actually execute the full thing so I think resources are still lacking and in terms of mindset um, to sell something obviously to have somebody who understands what art is, who understands and values your, your creativity, the time that you put in, um, the work that you have put in, and you know the amount of time that it takes and all of that for you to price a certain way and have people engage in it in that way and make it a livelihood is also another challenge that you'll face. Um, but I guess that's also a work in progress, and especially because there are a lot of people nowadays that are also open to purchasing local things rather than having to import, which gives us a great opportunity to rise. Um, but I think that's still a challenge that we're facing. Yeah. Our material are from uh, Dubai and Turkey and China because we don't have uh, materials here, so we import the, the, the material, then we, we make the clothes. Uh, from here. I'm an educator um, as well so I came here three and a half years ago um, so I work with Marinundo Girls School and I'm a college and career counselor so um, initially I was in the US and I was working with a similar school that had similar donors and they were the ones who actually brought in the idea of coming in to build a program so that's what actually brought me here to Rwanda, but I actually found other outlets to create and to continue to, to cultivate my creative side. So, um, me and Lula, um, we are not just a partner, we, we also friends, and I'm really thank her, thanks her for helping me to, it, she pushed me to, to do it because I was like, maybe I'm not ready to do it. And um, I think the reason why we called the, 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 the collection Untitled, we wanted people to, to name it the, the clothes they are, wear, they are wearing. We wanted to engage the audience, we wanted to engage the customers, we wanted to engage other Africans to actually have a say in what we were creating. And um, it came from wanting to merge art with fashion. Um, and trying to create something, something new and fresh that is for Rwanda. Um, and initially what we had in mind was we would have like a, um, an art piece as well as a collection and we would have that out. But I think we worked a lot more on it and she's an amazing designer who has been in the field for um, five years. So we used her skills and her, um, her ways of working with Rwandans and making it a lot more local and a lot more acceptable and just giving it a little bit of an art touch and bringing that to all together. It takes us like more than two months to, to, to be ready and um, it was a good experience. So I actually have a brand that is based in Ethiopia. So I work in fashion as well. And the main thing is, was also for me to have art be included within our clothing so that we can actually wear art, right? And um, so by printing out like the jackets that we have, by printing out certain arts, it, we are making a statement while we're walking on the street, which is wearing ourselves and wearing ourselves as in with pride and you know saying that we're African with everything that we that we have and everything that we are that we bring to that day so yeah me personally uh, I, I think wearing arts and fashion it's something huge it's it's like you are wearing an emotion for someone uh, it's we wanted to touch the people emotionally yeah 
I think, yes, Ethiopia is, uh, has a big community when it comes to the creative industry. Um, and what I see in Rwanda is potential, potential, potential. Because there is a lot of drive. There is this energy that you, that you see whenever somebody starts a business or whenever somebody's making an art piece. They are truly putting everything that they have in there. And so the passion is there, that's not lacking. I think the only thing that is lacking is the, obviously creating the opportunities to showcase that. I think there, is, there are a lot of creatives who are making this, but also do it by themselves. And they are in their studios or in their stores and making it just by themselves. And the people have to come to them and not them having to go to other people and actually expanding their audiences. And I think that will bridge in the gap and making sure that we give a lot more outlets for artists and creatives will allow them to also have more people coming in, more people looking at their work. And I think that's what's um, the only thing that is lacking. But it's, it's really up and coming, so it's hopeful, yes. So my target market, um, years ago, it was, uh, I was focused on uh, wedding um, ceremonial things. And, uh, but now uh, we are trying to, to, to target all people like kids, um, men, uh, women. We, we want like all renders, all people to wear trinko. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm consistently inspired by creatives in general. So, you know, when I look at, you know, Motions and, you know, Cedric, I, they are fully like immersed art within their livelihoods and that is a constant reminder that there there's always another limit that you can push and that you can go through and i would say asti has been my biggest inspiration as well because it takes a lot for you to love something to want to do it but to consistently wake up and every day choosing to do that is another inspiration so i would want to grow the collaboration that we have further and obviously push the limits as much as we can and eventually also work with more people and expand in ways that we can, yeah. We started with uh, two people, but now we are six. Yeah, we are six, six tailor and uh, um, one uh, receptionist, yeah. I don't have uh, a limited time for how long I want to stay here. I. I truly love Rwanda and I came here initially for three months and I'm here for three and a half years so that says a lot already <laughs> um, but I don't know how much I will stay here longer but I know even if I leave that will not be my last time this is this is another home